Microsoft is going to have its way with your mother and smother the life from your dog. What are you going to do? <laughs> What's up, game boys and girls? Big T here back with another video. And anti-Xbox, anti-Microsoft, anti, you know, anything to do with Microsoft. Propaganda and fear-mongering is at an all-time high. Um, and it's probably going to get a little worse before it subsides. Uh, because there's a fervent fan base of fanboys who uh, really want Microsoft to go away. They said they wanted Microsoft to compete, but that was just a, a facade. Uh, the more Microsoft com competes, the more angry and triggered they get. Um, but, you know, we all had the uh, information leak from Microsoft themselves. Like, actually, let me... Uh, uh, fix uh, a previous statement in a previous video but the entire internet thought this so that's why i also said it uh that the ftc leaked these documents turns out it was microsoft's incompetence they leaked the documents themselves uploading it uh, uh i don't know if it was to the wrong place but they uploaded it unredacted and all this kind of stuff so uh the general public was able to look at it and so that's how they got leaked so it was microsoft's fault uh and again I, my apologies um, but again, the information at the time, everybody in the entire internet, uh, thought it was my, uh, I thought it was FTC that leaked the documents and it made a lot of sense that they would, but it wasn't them. It was Microsoft themselves. Um, I mentioning that cause I, somebody in a previous, in my previous video said I was spreading misinformation, even though it was the information that we all had at the time and it changed. So there's that, but yeah, like. Uh, because of, you know, stuff coming out in uh, emails about Microsoft wanting to buy, uh, you know, Nintendo or talking about it. Well, not Microsoft, but Phil Spencer alluding to it be a career thing. Yeah, uh -huh, it would be a career thing that is never going to happen. <laughs> um, it's just it's just corporate spitballing, corporate speak um, and people getting freaked out and all that stuff is disingenuous it's to me it's it, you're just not paying attention it's a for whatever reasons uh the people with the lowest amount of information low information retaining low information uh receiving people uh always have the most uh to say <laughs> they always have the most um to, to say about a topic that they don't have enough information on um and that happens all the time they're very emotional um, when they speak, and it's not based in any kind of real information. Um, again, this is just corporate spitballing. Let's take uh, your email account and let's go through it and let's leak it out to everyone. Is there anything in there that you know you've suggested or whatever that would make you kind of look bad? Probably. Any? What about DMs that you've sent to people? Um, you probably sent DMs talking about harming somebody else. Would you actually do it? No, not really. So this is just similar to that, but on a different level. Obviously, we're talking about a corporate level where a company is, uh, uh, or a person in the company, not the company itself. A person in the company is spitballing uh, buying another company, which would never happen because Microsoft would never be allowed to buy a competitor. That is just the epitome of monopoly um, and no regulator on the planet, no regulatory board on this planet would allow Microsoft to buy out one of their competitors. Just not gonna happen. Look how much trouble it's been just to buy a company that makes games uh, in Activision Blizzard. Uh, it's been a lot of trouble. You think Microsoft can just stroll out there and buy Nintendo? Come on. First of all, they can't do it because they can't afford it um, because Nintendo has so much cash on hand. They're just gonna take that money and pay it out one for one, and then they have to talk about the evaluation of Nintendo and what Nintendo assets are. It's just not possible. And Nintendo is the most profitable of the three companies. That's just not gonna be able to happen. Okay, so let's stop with the fear mongering. A lot of again, a lot of this stuff is again a lot of this this peak. A lot of the people, the conversation around this is disingenuous. It is. Um, uh, in bad faith. These are bad faith actors um, making up these stories um, uh, based on corporate spitballing um, because they just don't like Microsoft. Uh, uh, Sony 
is the eternal media darling, no matter what they do. Um, it's just a fact. They are the eternal media darling. They can get away with all the things. When, when Sony came out there, you, you don't think they tried to uh, they tried to foreclose on Nintendo? Yes, because Nintendo was the guys, you know. And then they definitely helped to foreclose on Sega. Sega is out of there as a hardware manufacturer. Sony had a lot to do with that. Um, but do you do you ever hear about that in the media? No. There'll be a lot of spin. Oh, this wasn't that big or this wasn't that bad. Because that wasn't an era of uh, social media. And so the scrutiny was not as loud back then. And and there's a lot of fear in gaming media, especially to piss off the Sony fan base. There is uh, uh, an immovable fear <laughs> when it comes to negativity towards uh, Sony. Because a lot of these uh, uh, media types... These gaming media types, they fear the wrath of Sony fanboys uh, because at this current time, they are the most rabid, <laughs> uh, uh, crazy fan base out there. And it's just and it, it changes and it fluctuates. There was a time period when Nintendo fanboys were that there's a time period when Xbox dudes were that. Um, but in this current era, Sony fanboys are the most ravenous, <laughs> rabid fan base out there because they feel the pressure of what's coming. Uh, they feel the competition uh, gearing up on the Microsoft side, and they're afraid. They're, you know, they're in fear. They're in con total damage control mode. They're in total uh, uh, fear monger mode because they. That's why they tried to bring down Starfield, because they knew Starfield was going to be a big game. Ten million players. Um, they knew it was going to be what it is. And so they tried to preemptively strike that game. Um, and I'm going to do a review on that pretty soon here. Um, but th that's, you know, this is what we're dealing with here. And so a lot of the noise you hear, um, and you're going to continue to hear for a while, until the narrative does change, and I think it will change, um, you know, it's not going to end with Starfield. There's a lot coming, as you can see in the leaks. Uh, th there's some big stuff coming from Bethesda. There's some stuff coming from id, uh, Doom. There's like the narrative will change, and it's just um, the last gasp before the change. This happens all the time. There's always a fervous, a, f uh, a, f a ferocious, <laughs> you know, gasp. At the end of uh, somebody's era, uh, where you know people just are on high alert and high energy about protecting their their favorite brand, and that's just their favorite brand that is number one right now. They're not going to continue to be number one. I'm sorry, but they're not. It's going to it's going to change, um, and that's fine. As far and again, I say number one as far as uh, mind share market share. Uh, but Nintendo it will probably always remain the most profitable because they have, they do sensible business practices. They don't spend a billion dollars on the AAA studios. They understand you have to cultivate uh, a certain uh, a certain uh, design uh, a design philosophy when it comes to making games. They understand that, and that's why they're so profitable because they don't blow their wads on. Uh, on motion capture, you know, state of the art, all that kind of stuff. They focus on gameplay. And as far as I'm concerned, the gameplay is unmatched by anybody who does, uh, you know, including the people who spend all that money um, trying to make their games into Hollywood vehicles. <laughs> um, but like I said, uh, the tide is changing as far as the market share and mind share is going. And they're going to be kicking and screaming all the way till it happens. Um, it's crazy how um, how much stuff has already changed. I remember when uh, Xbox or Microsoft Xbox first announced that they were going to do day and date uh, games on PC. A lot of Microsoft fanboys were upset about that. Some even went over to the Sony side and became ponies. <laughs> like it was it was crazy. Well, after time, over time, they understood what was going on. They understood, and nobody on the Microsoft side moans or you know whines about that anymore it's just normal practice and that's happening with the sony fan base right now they are you see the tweets they cry every time they see a, a, a exclusive game ported to pc 
still, they're still whining about that. Even though those games come out a year and sometimes more after, they feel like their box is being devalued by other people being able to play the games that they love. Um, and it's just, it's strange uh, that they think that and they act like that. I would have no problem with Nintendo doing the same thing. Um, uh, but I tend to like Nintendo hardware and it mostly won't change. What probably would happen is I just end up buying it on both <laughs> Nintendo and PC. Uh, so I'm not worried about that. And I, I think mostly Nintendo fans would not go crazy the way Sony fanboys are going about their games being ported to PC. Um, and this is the last grasp, gasp, like I said, the last hurrah. They're gonna, they're gonna go kicking and screaming, and that's how it's going to continue to be. But at some point, the kicking and screaming will subside, and normality will ensue. Um, but yeah, as of right now, um, it's hard for me to understand, hard to see, uh, because as far as, especially from Nintendo fans who, who are doing some of this fear mongering as well, it's like. Microsoft has never been a threat to Nintendo, um, uh, unless you can say back in 2000 when they maybe would have actually tried to buy them. 2000, I think it was around that time. That was probably the only threat that they've ever been to Nintendo. Their big, the biggest threat they are is to Sony. Uh, the Sony fanboys know that, uh, and Sony fanboys mostly leave Nintendo fans alone, other than to scoff and mock Nintendo games even though they sell uh, tens millions more than their favorite games. Um, other than to do that, they mostly don't pay attention to Nintendo fans. And that's why I don't understand why Nintendo fans are uh, threatened by Microsoft or hate Microsoft as much as they do. Um, I, does it go back to Rare? Because Rare was not who Rare is or was uh, when they got sold to Microsoft. And Microsoft has mostly done uh, not a lot with them and up until recently. Um, so I just don't understand it. Sony was always the biggest threat to Nintendo. They've always been, um, and until they started realizing that, uh oh, there's this new guy, Microsoft, who does a lot of what we do, um, and they are actually a threat to us. So we got to do something about that. So it's weird. Um, I, I just don't understand, uh, what Nintendo fans think they can get out of it. They, they, they think they're going to get into good graces of Sony fanboys. <laughs> uh, no, that's just, it's not going to happen. Um, and I guess, you know, there's a more of a legacy with uh, Sony PlayStation than there is with Microsoft. So that plays into it. You know, some of the uh, RPGs, the JRPGs and stuff that were on PlayStation original, but now you have that stuff. A lot of that stuff you have, um, you don't need to placate to rabid Sony fanboys and the Sony fan base. Um, you can just you know do your thing and we can we operate outside of the nonsense let those two guys fight it out um for you know the dominance of the market and nintendo will be on the side over here making most of the money <laughs> like they've always been so yeah like i said i i'm talking about this just because i can't stand uh, like i said before bullshit narratives and this is a bullshit narrative um, but like, it, like I said, it eventually it will subside and, uh, uh, Microsoft will probably be the market leader, um, in the near future. So it's just going to happen. I, I made a video before I said, it's, uh, it's only going to get worse for Sony fanboys because this is going to happen. Um, I saw, um, some, uh, I saw some media or money charts basically showing that, Yes, uh, I think uh, Sony PlayStation has uh, 18 billion dollars in revenue, but they only have 1.4 billion in profit. And meanwhile, Microsoft um, has 12 billion in revenue, which is uh, you know five billion less, but they have more profit, uh, kind of like Nintendo. Um, that's funny. It's funny to see that. So even though they even though uh, Sony makes more money overall, they, they're in third place when it comes to actual profit. So they know that's not sustainable and that's why they're putting out, they're putting together these gas games, these games as a service games, and they're doing what they do over there. So 
and they'll probably start they'll probably stop doing as many third party um what do you call it uh exclusive deals uh because they're spending a lot of money and they're not making a whole lot in profit so yep that is the future it's coming uh sorry uh but you know try to avoid the <laughs> the anti uh, xbox propaganda and uh fear mongering uh for the next it's probably going to be at least for another year and a half the, the, the closer it gets to them being number one in the market the more it's going to happen as far as that stuff um uh i caught wind of some argument about oh if uh game pass isn't profitable or not profitable uh doesn't have uh a lot more subscribers by 2027 uh, microsoft's gonna bow out yeah they're spending 70 billion dollars this year to acquire uh activision blizzard but in four years they're just going to be done with gaming <laughs> and this is the type of stuff that i say is just uh disingenuous uh fear-mongering by bad faith actors um but it won't make a difference um unfortunately for them so that's my thoughts let me know what you think in the comments below do you think uh uh microsoft is warranting uh the scrutiny that they get i don't think they warrant it um they shouldn't have any more scrutiny than anybody else especially not sony uh but you know i'm just a uh, uh even-minded trying to be fair across the board guy that doesn't really work on the internet you have to be on a one side staunchly hating 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 uh to get any traction but that's not my deal uh that's it for this video let me know what you think in the comments below thank you again for watching and listening and i'll see you fools next time peace out <laughs>